Hello, welcome to this presentation uh, for BIM Coordinator Summit about the use of AI uh, in BIM and how AI, uh, hopefully, will make BIM better and easier to use. So first I uh, present myself. So my name is Sebastian Lucas. I am an architect, but also a web developer. I develop uh, especially application about uh, uh, AOC. Uh, and uh, I am also a content creator because uh, since uh, nearly one year, I uh, focus in uh, the use of AI in the AOC industry. So if you want to learn about the topic, you could follow me on uh, YouTube, but also I have a blog. I have a site, uh, futurearchy.co, so you, you could find some more information on that site. And I am developing some uh, courses about AI in AOC, uh, some in French, but uh, soon in English as well. So to me, it's very important uh, that BIM uh, is simpler. So BIM has some good concepts, I think, uh, like the 3D visualization. So the fact that everything is built, is designed in 3D. Uh, the fact that there is a connection between the model with some data. And we all know that a building is a fantastic source of data. And uh, by connecting the two, we can really uh, go further in the quality of the building. And also this concept of collaborative work that uh, you, we work on the same model, I think it's very uh, useful. But at the same time, uh, you know also that BIM is complex and perhaps for bad reason. So I think that uh, AI, the first use of AI is to build some assistant inside the build, uh, the BIM authoring software. So like Revit, Archicad and other software that are coming. Um, and... Um, this assistant, uh, probably you already know it. For example, if you are, you have a Microsoft Copilot, or maybe if you are more in the Google, uh, Google, Google ecosystem, you will find some equivalent. Uh, and if you are a developer like me, you probably know that with AI, we can already uh, develop very uh, easily uh, to start project. It's not uh, anymore a proble uh, problem to start from nothing, from scratch. And I think if you imagine uh, this kind of assistant in the field of a a of uh, BIM, uh, the first thing that I have in mind is something that helps you start easier. So create, for example, a family of wall, a specific family or of uh, stairs. Uh, I don't know what, but uh, probably it's difficult to do it for a uh, junior uh, BIM modeler and no more for more experienced people. But uh, even uh, for experienced people, it's a way to, uh, to lion uh, the, the task and to focus on what is really important and uh, so this is one part of it another part of uh, this assistant uh, uh, stuff is to automate the repetitive task so if you think about your your work when you are modeling a BIM model uh, probably uh, there are some tasks that are not very uh, interesting to, to do like for example aligning the quotation the dimension or maybe uh, uh, designing the same stuff over and over and uh, AI could help automate uh, this uh, repetitive task. Also, uh, I heard a lot that uh, that it's difficult for uh, for newcomer to BIM to adopt the best practice and AI, uh, especially connected with the large language model like ChatGPT, uh, have some uh, technologies that allow to, to do some database and knowledge base that are uh, more e more useful. So me personally, I liked uh, knowledge base. I, I contribute to many uh, during my career, but many times people uh, don't use it enough. And with uh, with AI, we have the possibility uh, to uh, so that people uh, communicate to the AI knowledge base using uh, in plain English and they don't have to understand the, the organization of the knowledge base. And finally, if you want to uh, contribute uh, to your software to improve it, for example, if you think that Revit or other software are not evolving enough and are not uh, focusing on your main pain point, you could uh, generate some plugin for this software using AI. And this, I think, is quite convenient. So to me, it's very important uh, to uh, to think about all what you are doing inside of Revit and try uh, to identify if there is some um, some automations that are possible. Uh, 
But of course, we are limited to what the AI software, the AI, uh, the BIM software, the BIM authoring software can integrate. And we know that the development of Revit, of Archicad, of uh, Vectorworks are not so fast because they are all software. Often, they are not, it's not so easy for them to integrate the new uh, functionalities. Uh, so we can, you can rely on uh, the plugin, but if you could, if you look at the plugin uh, store in uh, Revit, for example, uh, you will find that there are a few interesting plugins that integrate AI, but not so much. And this is really a challenge. Um, and finally, a third possibility is to uh, think about using other software, not. Uh, um, I, I don't say that you are going to change all your uh, your workflow from Revit to let's say uh, Spatio, but uh, you could use uh, this new generation software like uh, Snapred, uh, Spatio, or other like Ecta also. Um, you could use them as a complement, especially uh, at initial stage. And this software have uh, have implemented some part of uh, AI algorithm, but they will uh, be able to do it much faster. So I think it's quite important to not be uh, too, uh, too uh, gelled <laughs> in your current ecosystem, but have views also of other possibilities. Uh, another problem that BIM uh, faced, uh, and many people are complaining about that, is the fact that uh, the interoperability of BIM data between the software. So there are uh, some possibilities, like, for example, Speckle, which is a way to connect uh, uh, BIM software together uh, to have a flow, continuous flow of data between the software. But AI is, uh, is helping you uh, a little more. Uh, for example, uh, let's say that you want to export some data some uh, about your BIM model uh, to exploit it in a, in a spreadsheet or in other software. Often the data is not exactly in the format that you want. This, is, this could be one thing. And you know that the data is a huge quantity of data. So if you are going to edit it by hand, it will uh, cost you a lot of time. Another possibility is that you want to add some uh, metadata uh, associated with the BIM object. And uh, the people who work on the model, they don't have enough time. Maybe they enter the data in a way you don't like. But you know that AI, uh, especially large language models like ChatGPT, Claude, Llama, are able to uh, format your data automatically and you could ask it uh, with plain English what you want to do and it will take a spreadsheet as an input and it will uh, you will get a spreadsheet as an output with your data formatted. So it allows to people who don't know also the technique of uh, data uh, data analysis uh, of course uh, of course a data analyst professional data analyst will be able already to modify the data to clean it up and so on with the ai it could go a bit faster but for people who are, who are not professional of this and often in aoc we don't have professional of data analysis uh, it's really um, a good stuff that AI could help us to do the job. So it could be done inside uh, ChatGPT, for example, or it could be done uh, in the um, in the spreadsheet uh, copilot and so on. So so this handling of data is quite handy. Another use case is uh, let's say that you want to scan uh, your existing building that have not been designed with BIM, and you want to scan them to maintain the building using a BIM model. A digital twin if you want and uh, a problem you could face is that uh, if you do for example a, a 3d scan uh, a 3d scan result is a cloud a pound cloud and a pound cloud is uh, great but often there is too much detail it means that the the data of the uh, pound cloud uh, it is a build of many little uh, pound with uh, three x y z coordinates and these coordinates are very precise if the wall is not exactly flat there will be some uh, imperfection and so on and uh, this is one problem and the second problem is that it is not a semantic uh, designation of uh, construction element. And you know that in BIM, we have slab, we have wall, we have window, and you need to have a conversion between this uh, discrete data of uh, pound clothes uh, 
uh, towards uh, towards BIM object. And this is exactly what some software are doing. So if you want to find the software that do that, please, um, you could uh, download my uh, database of uh, AI software for IOC. So now, Another uh, another use case that I have in mind is the generation of uh, BIM, so the generation of floor plan of uh, of um, of option of projects. So why we should use that as an architect? I, I am a creator, I am an architect, so probably I want to design my building. But uh, I think AI on other generative architecture algorithm can help. Uh, for different reasons. So one is to explore more hypotheses. Manually, by hand, if I want to do some sketches, I am limited to what I can do uh, with the time I have. I am also limited by what I know. Uh, I have many limitations. For example, if I, I don't know the legislation about uh, how to design uh, a bathroom uh, for for disabled people, uh, maybe I will not design properly, especially if I am uh, a beginner. And I could uh, prevent me from losing this time by using some automation tool. So, also I could find I could think about uh, designing roughly, uh, very quickly, uh, just uh, just doing the big <laughs> the big uh, shapes of the building, and after the AI is designing the detail. And this could be very handy, especially for technical uh, spaces. So there is uh, there are more and more uh, design software that integrate the generative uh, aspect and that could be powered by AI or not because this uh, technology uh, is uh, is quite old. Since uh, 10 years or so, uh, there are some algorithms that uh, software uses to generate uh, architecture volume. Uh, but with AI, it's a new generation of uh, possibilities. So one, uh, one aspect is uh, use this kind of software uh, at early stage of design. So there are some software like uh, Hectare, Autodesk Format, uh, TestFit, Arcol. Uh, another aspect could be uh, to use the data, the urban data, so to use it and uh, to integrate in uh, in the visualization. After, there are other uh, type of software that focus more on the plan, the floor plan. One of these are Finch3D, so I, I encourage you to follow their development be because it's quite impressive. Plan Finder, which is a, a plugin in Revit and that allow to generate plan uh, directly inside your BIM model. Hyper, which is a platform uh, which allow to generate uh, some design element. Uh, for example, you could have a generator for a stair, you could have a generator for something else. It's kind of a very modular way of, uh, of splitting the task of generation. Of generation. And layout is uh, still another software focused on, uh, on housing and uh, you could generate the entire building uh, very quickly. Uh, it's quite interesting to see what they can do and how you could integrate it in your uh, design workflow. Uh, after when we generate some uh, architecture, some uh, volumetry, uh, or maybe we just uh, design by hand, we need to uh, optimize the performance. So you all know that uh, performance, especially uh, CO CO2 emission and other um, ecological uh, KPI uh, are very uh, useful to track. And one of the, the problem of the traditional method where the architect is designing uh, with his intuition and after he send his work to an engineer who check if it is valid and also, it's is that it takes time and you don't have the feedback immediately. So now we are going to, uh, to uh, transition toward the software where uh, the, the estimation of uh, the performance um, analysis is totally integrated in the design uh, in the design itself. So when you design something, you know the performance of, of what you are designing and you can do the change at the right moment. And of course, we could also think about algorithm, uh, especially powered by AI, that allow to optimize uh, your current uh, building uh, to make some more uh, the building more performant. 
So this is something that we are not we have not always the time to do by hand, and it's quite handy that uh, an algorithm could help us. After we you have all the thematics, the topic of um, image uh, AI and image. So you probably seen uh, a lot of uh, image of uh, generated with AI. Uh, maybe you know that with AI we can uh, control the image. We can have uh, like a, a schematic three D, and we we are not obliged to uh, design uh, so much in detail to have uh, a perfect render. With uh, AI, you could have a very rough three uh, D and get a, a Uh, nice visualization so th the change it makes is that uh, doing this kind of visualization is more much cheaper much faster and you could uh, you could use it at uh, at more stages of the project you could send it more frequently to your client to your uh, your coworker and so on and you could get feedback so i think it's quite interesting for any architects uh, who use beam or not Uh, to uh, take a look, look at uh, how AI could render uh, some image of architecture. And by the way, uh, I will uh, release a course about this topic. So follow um, follow me if you want to be uh, informed about that. After, if I conclude, uh, this uh, list of uh, use cases is not, uh, of course, uh, complete. There are many other possibilities. But uh, uh, if you think about uh, building management, when you are a building owner and you want to uh, to save uh, money by uh, exploiting more uh, intelligently your your building, uh, there is two two at least two topics that we can think about. One is uh, let's see this escalator in uh, in a commercial center in Tokyo, for example. Uh, it is used by many people and. At the moment, it will break. But if you could uh, just uh, anticipate uh, anticipate this breakage and uh, and maybe fix the problem and maybe change uh, the piece that will probably fail, it will be a good thing because you you will not uh, interrupt interrupt the use of the building and uh, you will also save money. So this is called predictive maintenance. Another aspect is uh, if you think about the building as a system, and this system has uh, used some energy, and the energy to, to uh, warm the building, to uh, for the light, and so on. And uh, you could have uh, a system of uh, exploitation that is optimized with AI to, for example, understand when people are really uh, there Uh, in order not to warm the building for nothing and so on. And if I can give you an example, uh, Google uh, has used AI since, uh, I think, like 10 years ago uh, in, in all its, its data center to optimize the consumption of, uh, of electricity. And the, um, it saved uh, not a small amount of money with that. I think so it was an improvement of uh, 15 up to uh, 20% of uh, saving just by optimizing the way that the electricity is used inside the data center. So it's not uh, something, uh, it's something very interesting, but uh, it needs to be Uh, integrated to um, uh, management, uh, an automatized management of the building, of course. So not uh, not all, all building could benefit from this. So that's it for this short presentation. I, uh, if you want to know more about this, I encourage you to visit first my site, futurearchie.co. So here I have some free tools. I have some courses, uh, some in French, but now in English soon. And uh, you could follow me also on YouTube. Uh, so my channel is Future Arc. Uh, so Future Arc, you will find uh, this channel with some interview of uh, founder of new uh, new tools that use AI, like Ektar, for example, or Sparkle, Anchor also. Uh, also, I have uh, one of the tools that I propose is a database of uh, AI software for AOC. So I think there are many possibilities and often people are, are kind of um, lost in uh, all this, uh, this new software that pop up. So I made a selection for you. And if you want to just uh, get it, you will have my, uh, my best of of the software for uh, AI software for AOC. And also I am preparing a course. So if you are French, 
Uh, I have already some courses about ChatGPT automati automation, uh, but now I am just moving to English. So if you like the French accent, of course, I have an accent, but, uh, but uh, I will try to explain you um, as uh, simply as possible how to use AI uh, to do some image rendering, especially using stable diffusion and Confi UI. So thank you very much. Uh, if you have any question, uh, don't hesitate to ask it in the comment. Uh, I will uh, answer you. Thank you, and uh, uh, I hope it uh, interested you. Bye-bye.